during the time of writing this, June 22nd at 3.57 a.m., yeah, that's me. I haven't been watching a lot of anime recently, and I've been reading more manga than anything since it's just easier to do. I've been trying to work on my drawing game, so I've been pretty distant from anime and stuff, which, yeah, kinda sucks. But, the trailer for MHA Season 4 and Fire Force dropped not that long ago, and aside from getting me super excited for Fire Force, or Fire Brigade of Flames, I don't fucking know. I also got the urge to rewatch the past MHA seasons, which is super productive of me, because I TOTALLY don't have a list of anime to watch. Not at all! So I opened up Crunchyroll on my PS4, and to my surprise, it was on a search screen for Megalobox. I meant to watch it a while back, but I guess I forgot. So I said screw it and I watched all 13 episodes. When it was first announced and the trailer was released, and when I found out that it was to pay homage and celebrate Fighter Joe, I was super interested. So I went in with high hopes and expectations, and I was a little disappointed. Just a little. Don't get me wrong, I did enjoy it, just not as much as I thought I would or wanted to. There are things to like, but of course there are things I didn't. So I'm just gonna talk about the major issues I had with this short show. So basically throughout the entire show, Noburu and most of the other cast goes on and on about how good Joe is and how much skill he has. But I don't buy that shit! Joe is strong. Really strong. He's got a real good punch and it gets even better later on. That's fine, but the only other thing he's got is being durable. In none of his fights do we ever see him do anything impressive. We see him train or do some form of training in nearly every episode, but once we get to the match, we aren't shown any payoff to it. Joe has seven league matches and really only two of them showed anything he's learned well. The fight with Aragaki seems... Eh. The fight with Aragaki seems... Ah, fuck! The fight with Aragaki is probably the best fight in the show, which is pretty disappointing. We'll get back to this. But in preparation for that fight, Joe was told to practice on his footwork and to have an equal 50-50 distribution. During that fight, in the ring, he's constantly telling himself that out loud. This shows that he is listening, but it's also doing something else. We'll get back to this. The other fight was with... Brother... Uh... Ah, yeah, right. Him. The whole issue with the fight is that his gear adapts and basically controls him, reacting to Joe so it makes it hard to do anything. Joe catches the flaw in his gear, which is cool, but it was really the only time something like that happened. If it happened any time prior, then it clearly wasn't significant or memorable enough. Hell, I can't even remember anyone's name, let alone face other than the main characters, the spider, which in my opinion think he would have been better Colombian instead of Mexican. Just saying, throw my sombrero in the mix and coked up Shark Boy. And it's only because he's a coked up Shark Boy. So the fact that Joe was nothing really more than a hard hitter with a good counterpunch, all of the fights sucked a little. Every fight was basically the same. Joe gets his ass beat up, goes for at least two rounds, he falls in every fucking fight, basically none of his opponents do, and if they do, it's because Joe won with basically one punch. Maybe a few punches. Might as well call this motherfucker one punch too, cause wow, that's basically all he does. You would think that with the advancement... You would think that with the advance... Fuck, why am I saying advancements? You would think that with the advertisement was for this new advanced boxing, you would see some good looking... As the weebs on YouTube say, Sakuga. But uh, nah, not really. Prince of Tennis? <laughs> yeah, all right. In your dreams, Haiku? <laughs> Overrated. Megalobox has decent punching. Huh. The best looking things you'll get out of Megalobox during a fight is maybe the footwork of a character. It goes by so fast though that it doesn't really matter. I'm not expecting every single fight to blow me away because not every single fight has to. But you would think that the important ones would at least do this, right? Hell no! Out of his seven league matches, about three were pretty important since they had more emotional attachments to them. And only one really stood out. You could say four with the fight against... Fuck. Yeah, him! But his fight goes by pretty fast, too! This fight looks pretty good, though. I can confidently say the fight against Aragaki is the best overall in both visuals and story. We learn just about as much as we can about Aragaki in the time given to us. It has good camera work, involves Noburu heavily, and takes him out of his dirtbag attitude for a little while. And like I said before, Joe was constantly trying to implement something he was taught. 
best fight. Mikio was as decent as the other fights that had minimal attention. And then we have the final fight, the fight everyone was dying for, including Joe. The final match between Joe and Yuri. And it sucked. It sucked because the fight itself honestly wasn't that interesting. And Yuri himself is honestly so goddamn boring. From the get, Yuri can be seen as a bit of an asshole, and that's fine. He's supposed to be the rival villain guy thing. He looks down on Joe in the beginning, but clearly has an interest in him, and both grow the higher Joe gets in ranking, and eventually that explodes into a form of respect that makes him surgically remove his gear. That's pretty fucking cool! You would think that this would lead to an amazing fight, but you'd be about as dumb as Sakura thinking Sasuke wouldn't try to kill her for a second time. Because why would this fight be cool? <laughs> this fight? what's supposed to be the most meaningful and important fight of the whole thing. It's just as mediocre as the Shark Boy fight. Nothing significant happens in this fight. Nothing visually pleasing, no new techniques, nothing different. What's worse is that we only get most of a single episode on it. By doing that, we skip over so many moments of the fight. The fight goes to like round 13, the longest match of the whole show, and we don't even get to see most of it. Yuri as a character goes through enough of an arc for it to be satisfying, but his personality as a whole is so bland, it's just so annoying and hard to feel anything but annoyed until he gets his gear removed. I can already hear people though going, Yeah, but a rival isn't supposed to be likable, they're supposed to make you feel bad. No, goddammit, that's a villain, not a rival. A rival can be perfectly likable, and a rival doesn't have to be so goddamn bland. Killua and Gon, Zoro and Sanji, hell, most of the piano playing characters in your Lion April are rivals to each other in their own way. All of them are likable rivals! On top of that, only a handful of characters ever get any sort of backstories, almost none, but Yuri goes on and on about how his life basically had no meaning. But we don't see any of that! How the hell am I supposed to feel anything for this character if I'm not shown anything he tells the characters in this show or me? Hell, Joe never gets much either while we're on the topic. I understand that he doesn't have a name except Junk Dog until he names himself Joe, but other than the small clip we get of Noboru finding him, we get nothing. It's fine not getting every little piece of detail about a character. Sometimes it's better that way. But for a main character and us basically getting nothing, it's a little hard to really invest myself in Joe. Especially when his one and only thing is, I want to play with Yuri! I want to say it again. I did like it. I do like it. The show does a really good job focusing on the characters and the relationship between them. My favorite part of the entire show was the art style, and it was one of the main reasons why I wanted to watch it. Both character line art imitating pencil strokes and the backdrops possibly being real ones, it made the show look so goddamn good even at its most boring times. The thing is, there's another show in the same sport that does it much, much better. I fucking love Hajime no Ippo. And I'm sure I've mentioned it a couple times within my videos, but now I want to talk about it just a little bit more in detail. Not fully, but just a little more. Going into Megalobox, I was kind of comparing it to Ippo and how well it fared as a boxing anime. Ippo does characters and matches very well, even small ones. They even made training better. Let's ignore the leaf catching. Hi, Shai. Hello. My dog walked in the room. Not my dog, my uncle's dog, but it's kind of my dog. Hello, Shai. What do you want? You want scratches? Learning how to naturally keep his guard up is more memorable than any training Joe did. Seeing Evil holding on to the gloves with his teeth so much better than seeing Joe not be balanced. Joe has a strong punch, Cool, but nothing ever comes out of it. Epo, Dempsey roll. It's the result of training and is a visually eye-catching technique. Like I said earlier, a final anything should be fantastic. Fight or sport, a championship or a final match in a competition should be just as astounding as the final fight in a shonen. Two fights come to mind when it comes to Epo. Epo versus Sendo and Takamura versus Hawk. I'm pretty sure you can watch either the entirety of these fights or the highlights of them. And any single minute of these fights are better than the entirety of any 
any fight in Megalobox. That can go for some of the sparring matches too. Ippo versus Miyata and Itadaki are better fights than basically anything in Joe. I'd rather not get into detail with these fights, so I beg you, look these fights up, any Hashimino Ippo fight, and compare them to anything in Megalobox. The easiest way I can explain it is that every single fight in Ippo gives the feeling of power. Every single punch feels like it has weight, and it has that anime flair to back it up. Basically, the Crocodile Basket treatment. There's also just generally more happening in these fights, but just please! Go watch any fight. When it comes to the characters though, it does that fantastic too with the four man squad alone. Their friendship feels genuine and you see them outside hanging out together and just having a good time. It gave us this image as well, and it's one of my favorite screenshots to come out of anime ever. I don't want to take away from Joe in this regard though, because like I said before, it's probably handled better than the boxing. The only issue is that, like I said before, not enough characters get any development. Nobu probably gets the best treatment out of all of them considering the change of heart at the end, and the whole blind thing. Alright, let's wrap this up. So I'm gonna say it one more time. I did enjoy Megalobox. I really did. I'm glad I watched it. It just kind of disappointed me. I want to make this clear as well. I do feel a little bad digging into Megalobox because it was only 13 episodes. In Epo, big fights last for like four episodes, but every fight in Megalobox is only done in one episode. Sometimes not even the majority of it. But that doesn't mean they couldn't have made it a little better. If anything, doing it for only a few minutes every few episodes should be easier than doing it for four episodes straight. You know what, just go watch Hajime no Evil.